Well, I am honoured to be sharing with you the event which for me has been something I've been working towards for some time, almost two years in fact, in uh, careful uh, negotiation with the Sobotsky estate and family. Uh, we came to a wonderful arrangement that will see us work together to bring Amicus Productions back from beyond the grave. I'm working most closely with Sergey, uh, who is Milton Subotsky's son, and I would like to consider him a friend as well. He's a, a good man, and we've been working together carefully uh, to explore the correct themes, ideas, and manners of expression, which for a new Amicus film in the grip of terror keeps it consistent with the spirit of those films that Milton Sobotsky acted as such a creative force for. Um, and really Milton himself is a key to this project because this endeavour is in many respects a tribute to him and the wonderful creative energy and the legacy that he brought for the British horror scene. <laughs> Despite coming from faraway shores, he would make his mark on the creative culture of the horror genre in Britain in a way that is now still fondly remembered. And when I looked at developing the British Horror Studio project, do you remember so many months ago? And um, we discussed ideas about our Facebook groups and discords, which incidentally, Facebook group did win out on. So get over to what's called the British Horror Studio Facebook group. Um, one of the main objectives was also to explore whether or not we could ever bring back something of the past that could act as a banner, as a flag for what it is we're trying to achieve with this project. And in my heart of hearts, I always hoped that it would be Amicus Productions and that our discussions with the state would lead to the event which is occurring today. And so we find ourselves now at the beginning of a journey which gives us the opportunity to bring Amicus Productions back and to see it thrive once again in a very different economic film landscape. And yet, the artistic sensibilities of those original films are the inspiration for this endeavour as well. And so as I look to In the Grip of Terror and our developments for that film, there is nothing we're looking at doing that would denigrate the legacy, I, at least I feel, that we are inheriting. In fact, in many respects, you could describe our effort as a continuation of those films. I like to think in a little bit uh, if our project isn't something like what Amicus might have been had things been different back in the early 1970s, had it continued. Um, it's not to say that we're, uh, try and pronounce the word right, slavishly devoted to the past. There are modern elements, of course, that we're going to bring, but at the same time, they are not and I don't know how to phrase this, but not things that would spoil <laughs> what you like about Amicus. Um, not an attempt to impart upon it idiosyncratic sensibilities. Instead, it is to take something that is, in my mind, already sacred and to champion it and to celebrate it and to make more things like it. Interestingly, our film in The Grip of Terror is almost anachronistic, therefore. Um, it is set in a time that feels accessible for modern audiences and yet evokes something of the past. It might be the way characters are dressed or perform. It might be a slight anachronistic use of props um, from different eras that evoke a timelessness 
that makes you feel like you're in a nostalgic past, but to at the same time could touch it today. I feel that is the appropriate way to treat Amicus Productions and, and, and our first film, which takes some influence, you could say, from Asylum, of all films. It is a portmanteau horror, so of course we are maintaining that very important, critical tradition, in fact. And of the four stories, uh, three of them are actually stories suggested by Fiona Samotsky, um, Milton's uh, wife. Um, and it's such a touching thing as well to be able to work with the Sabotsky family creatively as well and to take their ideas, their suggestions and to hear stories about Milton as well. Um, and it makes this whole endeavour so much more than anything that's uh, commercial. Like why would you, you know? As a creative person, I've always placed my priority on making a studio that is sustainable based on creative independence, based on maintaining a sense of artistic integrity. And I think we've, by and large, got it right because we're not rich enough to have sold it. <laughs> and that's exactly what, what drew me to Amicus as well. And now is the time. Now is the time, I hope, that we can build a community around Amicus of filmmakers, artists, as well as horror fans that can make our first campaign to raise funds for In the Grip of Terror a success. But our plans go far beyond a single film. We want Amicus Productions to be a refuge for horror artists and fans that perhaps want a gentler place <laughs> to be, to work with, to work in. Those are longer term plans, but they portend to a positive vision and one that I hope you will become a part of today by visiting our campaign page in the grip of terror and the link probably accompanying this video and hitting follow. If you're not a Kickstarter backer, if you've never been on that website before, sign up and hit follow. It's a good site. I've backed many projects myself and it is the only way that something like this could really, in my mind, be possible. So my friends, thank you for watching and rest assured, I will be sharing more information, more updates about this fantastic event in independent British horror. Thank you for watching.